Hey guys, welcome to Bit of Game Dev. Today I will be showing you how to implement the projectile movement algorithm. This algorithm is very useful in game development. It can be used for predicting the path of the projectile as well as animation. If you've ever played this basketball shooting game, the algorithm can be used to, to draw the exact path the ball will take. Or if you played Pocket Tanks or Worms and Armageddon, it is also used there for the projectiles. And of course it isn't limited to 2D, it can also be used in the 3D space as well. In my case it's been most useful animating a character jumping, and predicting the exact point he will land and how high he will jump. To start, let's create a 2D scene, create simple sprites for the ground and the character, and create one sprite for the projectile. Now I know some people get scared whenever they see math, but don't worry, we'll go step by step what these functions mean. The two functions here are used for calculating the X position and the Y position at a given time. The variables we'll be using in this project will be the X axis, the Y axis, the V0 for the initial velocity, the T for time, the theta for initial angle, the H for max height, and the G for the gravity. Now in the editor create a script called projectile. In the script create a coroutine movement. The input variables are V0 for the initial velocity and the angle. Now for the time, we will create a while loop, which will go from 0 to 100 seconds. This will simulate the projectile moving for 100 seconds. Now we will implement the formulas I showed you earlier. And finally, set the position of our object to the new x and y variables. Now at the top of the script, we will create two variables, one for initial velocity and one for the angle. And in the update, when we press space down, first we will convert the angle to radians, since the sine and the cosine functions use radians instead of degrees, and then we will start the movement coroutine. In the editor assign the script to our projectile and set the initial velocity and angle. When we press space we can see our projectile moving accordingly. Now to visualize it better, let's draw the path of the projectile. Create a line renderer and assign a custom material. Next in the line renderer tick use world space. Now in our script create two variables, one for the line and one for the step. Now create a new function called drawPath, which will have the input variables of v0, angle and the step. Now we will draw the first 10 seconds of the path the projectile will travel. Let's calculate the position count of the line by dividing the total time by the step and adding 2 for the last 2 points so the line renders correctly. Now create a for loop which will go from 0 to the total time and adding the step in each iteration. The i value will represent our time. Now create the two functions for the x and y, and set the line position to our new vector. Finally copy the x and y formulas, and set the position for the last point in the line. Now in the update method, calculate the angle every frame and call the function drawPath. Now to avoid dividing by 0 or having too many points in our line, we will clamp the step to go from 0 0.01 and the step. Now assign the variables and click play. We can see our path being drawn. And how the path changes depending on the angle and the initial velocity. But we have a problem. The path will always start in the 0.0, .0 position in our world space. Since we want our character to fire the projectile, we need to modify the script. In the script, add a variable called FirePoint. Now in our draw path and movement functions, before we set the position to our new vector, we add the vector to the FirePoint position. Now assign the FirePoint to our character transform, and when we press play, we can see that our path starts at the character position.
Now we go back to the math. If you know the target position our point will reach, that is the x and the y values, we can calculate the time it will take to reach the set point using the x formula, and we can also calculate the initial velocity using the y formula. Now you will say, what the f*** is this, I wanna develop games, not learn math. But it's actually nothing complicated, and if you don't want to waste time, you can just use the final formula. But here are the steps used to derive the formula for the initial velocity using the y formula. First, in our y formula, we replace all instances of t with our formula to calculate t. Now, shifting the variables around, we get to the formula used for the initial velocity. In our script, create a function called calculate path. The input variables will be target position, the angle, and the output variables will be the initial velocity and the time. This is done by using the out keyword in front of the variable. Now all we need to do is write the functions we calculated earlier, starting with the initial velocity. Since we need the initial velocity to calculate the time. At the top, create and get the reference to our camera. And in the update, set the target position to the screen to world point of our mouse position. Now create the variables v0 and time, and then call the function by passing the target position, angle, and the v0 and time with the keyword out in front of them. Now replace the initial velocity editor parameter with our new calculated variable v0. In the play mode, we can see that our path is changing by moving our mouse but does not exactly pass through our mouse position. To fix this, we need to subtract our fire point position from our screen to world point position. This is because if we don't do this, the calculated path will always start at the 0.0, .0 point in the world space. But we actually want to move the pivot of the calculation to our character position. So the formula thinks the character position is the 0, 0 point. And this is all done by subtracting the fire point position. Now we can see that our path passes exactly through the mouse position. But we have this time variable which we never use. Add a new input variable in our draw path called time and replace all variables of total time with our time. Now we will draw the path to exactly the target point. If we do the same in our movement coroutine and replace the 100 seconds with our time, we will simulate the projectile moving to exactly our target point. Now once again back to the math. Let's introduce a new function for the max height. The function determines the maximum height the projectile will reach. Let's see how we can use the height information for our benefit. For example, if we know the target position, that is the x and the y, and the maximum height, we can calculate the initial velocity, the angle, and the time it takes to reach the point. For the first part, we use the height formula to derive the initial velocity formula. Next, we use the x formula to derive the cotangent of our angle. To do this, we replace the v0 with our calculated v0 from our height. And for the final and most complicated part, we use the y formula to calculate the time. In the y formula, we also replace the v0 with our calculated v0 from our height, and then modify the equation to match the template for calculating the quadratic equation. From this equation, we can clearly see what our a, b, and c variables are. Finally, we plug them into the quadratic equation formula. We shorten the formula a little bit by multiplying and extracting the variables, and then we get our two values by using the quadratic equation to calculate for the minus and the plus. Both values can be used in our equation, but we will use the larger value. Now we calculate the time using only the variables we know. Since we have the time, we can calculate the angle, and once we have the angle, we can calculate the initial velocity. Create a new function in our script called calculate path with height, and set its input parameters to the target position, the h as in height, and output for v0, angle, and time. Now implement the formulas we calculated earlier, starting with the time formula.
then the angle and finally the velocity. In our update, we no longer need to use the editor value for the angle. At the top of the script, create a new variable called height, change the calculate path function with our new calculate path with height function, and input all the required parameters. Now in the play mode, we can see that our function is working correctly, with our height always remaining the same value as we set in the editor. But back in our script, we actually don't need to use the editor to set the height. We can calculate unnecessary height using the target position. You can change this formula depending on what your use case is. Now there is one small problem and that is when we go below our character. The path doesn't show. That is because the height is negative and the height mustn't be negative. To fix this, just clamp the height to go from 0.01 .01 to the height. And now it's working correctly. The final part I want to show you is how to use these functions in 3D space. Let's create our ground character and projectile in 3D. In our script, we will raycast to find our hit point. And then we will need a direction from our fire point to our hit point. Now calculate the ground direction using the x and the z value from our direction. Now set the target positions x to the ground direction magnitude and the target positions y to the direction.y. Now add a new variable to the draw path and the movement functions, which is the direction in which we need to move the projectile. Now inside the functions, instead of just adding our new vector, we must calculate it by adding the direction times x and adding the vector 3 dot up times y. This is because our movement is no longer in 2D space. In the play mode we can see everything working correctly. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, as always leave a like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any suggestions on what I should make next, and I will also be leaving a Patreon link in the description if you want to show your support, and if not, it's all good anyways. See ya in the next video, bye!